Hey friends, it's Holly from Chic Antique and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to refresh an old wing back chair. We'll be using gel stain on this chair today and this one has a bit of a funny story to it. I'll get into that later, but if you're excited for this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started. All right, friends, here's the piece we're going to be working on today. It is this very old wing back chair. The story behind this chair is I actually got this about four years ago for $5 on Facebook Marketplace. Here is actually how it started out. Um, and I got a new chair recently, so I decided to make over this one. I started to refinish this back in April. I didn't film the beginning portion. I actually dyed the fabric this blue color. So it was originally yellow and then I dyed it this blue color using watered down chalk paint. And I wasn't able to work on it for a few months, but now I'm getting back to it. So I'm gonna show you how I freshened up the wooden legs and arms. If you have any questions about how I dyed the fabric, make sure to leave those in the comments and I can answer those for you. But basically what I did was I watered down Dixie Bella chalk paint in the color Vintage Duck Egg and I applied it with my Annie Sloan brush, working it into the fibers really well and sanding in between coats. And then I sealed it with Dixie Bell's Easy Peasy Spray Wax. So we're going to start this one by removing all of the tape that I used to cover the legs and arms. You can see as I'm untaping that the finish is actually coming off the paint. So I'm going to be sanding in just a little bit to remove that finish because it is starting to fail. So if I put something on top, it's not going to last. So I need to remove that finish. I'm going to clean this using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner mixed with some warm water. I did sand these legs back in April and I cleaned them and everything, got them all prepped, but since I'm coming back to it months later, I am just doing that process all over again because dust and all sorts of things could have gotten on these legs. So I wanna start over with a clean canvas. And just prove to you, this is what the water looked like. They did get super dirty over that time. So even if you stop a project, make sure when you come back to it, you do your prep really well and clean it before you get started again. Now I'm just rinsing everything off using clean, clear water. After everything is dry, I'm coming back with a 220 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out and remove some of that old finish. You can see how easily it is coming off. That's how you know that it is a failing finish and you need to remove it. Next, I'll be using a tack cloth to remove all of the dust from sanding. Now I'm going to be flipping over the chair and taping everything off using this Scotch Sharp Lines tape.
Now that everything is prepped and ready, I'll be staining using Dixie Belle's No Pain Gel Stain in Espresso. If you're using this stain, make sure to wear gloves or at least one glove on your dominant hand. That way you don't get the stain on you because it is oil-based, so it's really hard to get off and you don't want this absorbing into your skin. And make sure to mix it up really well before you get started. It tends to separate and get a little bit watery on the top. So you want to mix it up really well so it looks like pudding texture before you get started. And I'll be applying this using a small foam brush. I'm applying this lengthwise since you can't really see the grain on these anymore. I'm just applying it lengthwise and you can already see how much of a difference this makes. I just love watching this. It's so satisfying seeing how much this stain just brings these legs back to life. Now to work in that stain and remove any of the excess, I'm using a lint-free shop towel. Since these legs are super duper old and dry, there's not too much stain to remove. I'm more just using this shop towel to work it into the legs. And here's just a progress shot. The top legs have one coat and the bottom left one has no stain on it. You can see how good it looks already. And now we're just going to continue on the other side of that leg, applying it with that foam brush. And then I'll come back and massage it in with the shop towel. Now onto the left leg, just repeating that same process, applying it with the foam brush, and then removing that little bit of excess with the shop towel after. I do want this soaking in pretty well, so before I actually wipe it back, I let it sit for 30 seconds to one minute, just so that the stain starts sinking in, so I don't remove all of it with the shop towel. I just cannot get over how satisfying this is. I just love it. I could watch it all day, honestly. <laughs> Now after letting that stain dry for six hours, I'm coming back for a second coat. And I'm just repeating that same process we did on the first coat on this second coat.
If you have any questions about how to use this gel stain by Dixie Belle, make sure to leave those in the comments. I would love to help you out with that. This is one of the easiest stains I've ever used. That's why I use it all the time. So it's definitely beginner friendly and I would definitely recommend it for anyone looking to try an easy stain. They have a couple different colors. This is one of the darker ones. They have picklin white, weathered gray, walnut, espresso, and I believe a black one as well. Now I'll be sealing this with Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin, just doing one coat of this with my synthetic brush from Home Depot. I did let this cure for 48 hours because the stain is oil-based and the top coat is water-based. So obviously oil and water repel each other. So you do want to let your stain cure for at least 48 hours, even 72 hours if you can before you seal it with a water-based top coat, just so that it can do its job properly. So I'm just applying this as smooth as I can. And it looks kind of blue when you apply it, but that's just because this top coat is a little bit on the thick side and it definitely has a bit of a white tint to it. So when you put it on a dark color, it does kind of look blue, but don't let that scare you because it dries completely clear. And it may look like I'm applying this a little bit sloppily, but I will tell you the more you work this, the less it's going to level out. So if you're not overworking this, it's going to level out on its own and smooth out than if you were super worried about getting super, super straight lines and going over it. So it's best not to overwork this so that it can self-level on its own. Alrighty, now that it is all complete, I just want to remind you what we started with. Here's what it looked like four months ago. So I'm just reminding you what it used to look like. And here it is after dyeing the fabric. And here's how it looks now. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this makeover today. I hope you enjoyed it. As you saw, this one was kind of a doozy. If you heard the story and you watched all the way through, you know it was definitely a hard piece for me to do. But I hope you enjoyed the final result, how it turned out. And before you leave, I would love it if you would check out some of my other videos. I'll have my most recent one up here in the eye as well as down below in the description. 
and follow me on Instagram if you aren't already following me there. I'll have that in the description as well. So thank you guys so much for watching today. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Yes. Got her. Okay. Um, are we in the shot? Pretty good. Thanks. Oh, it's all goopy. Yeah, it's gross. It looks like pudding. It's kind of like oozy and like. It's looks like they get came, all clogged up. Looks like what came out of my car yesterday. Oh, uh, we changed the oil. It was, it was like, oh, is it black? That's it bad. Oh my god. All sweaty. <laughs> Disgusting.